Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and welcome to part three of Kerbal Spaceships, our serious business realism overhaul and Kerbal Space Program. So we have this ethanol liquid oxygen engine we use to break the sound barrier in our X1 uh, clone. We're going to use it on a sounding rocket because it has better thrust to weight ratio. We just want to build a slightly bigger rocket. Now we've also solved the problems with disintegrating fairings. Obviously we have continued to upgrade the Kerbal Space Program install with all the mods and this particular version we finally have tiny fairings working on the front of this so we can in fact carry scientific instruments up to great altitudes. Uh, look at this thing go, it's already moving through the sound barrier, well past the sound barrier, it's gonna keep on going and hopefully get into space carrying its highly important uh, scientific instruments. We have a uh, barometer and of course a thermometer, so we're gonna carry these up and hopefully we're gonna get new signs on, on the way up, hopefully this thing will escape the atmosphere. The previous design used a different composition of rocket fuel, it used a different engine design, and indeed, the, the thing was a lot smaller, so it got off to a faster start. But this is continuing to accelerate, passing through Mach 3 now. We're up to almost uh, 30 kilometers, 30 kilometers up. And our apoapsis height is just leaving the atmosphere now. So we will get that all-important science from outside the atmosphere. And we're about to burn out. You know, this may not be quite as successful as our previous sounding rocket. But at least we've got a, a payload on the front of this, so there we go, pop that open, and now I'm going to try logging pressure data here. Of course, I need that mod that keeps the windows in the, the right place, so we're going to select that. And yeah, old me goes through and rambles on about scientific instruments and everything. You know, you don't want to watch this whole thing. We go on an epic ballistic arc wherein we try to collect data. Now, important thing to know is that the pressure sensor we have will only give you uh, pressure based on altitude, whereas the temperature one will actually give you different science, science depending upon the biome. So this one is heading out over the Atlantic right now. We have the water biome, but in further subsequent launches, we will be able to collect data from other locations. Anyway, while this is falling back down, I'm going to mention some other changes that have come through. So obviously, we're updating the, the install using CCAN. And right now, Tweak Scale has broken for parachutes. It's working for some other things, but it's completely broken for parachutes, which means I couldn't actually put a parachute inside the fairing. That's why this falls back to the Earth. And yes, oh, I thought for a second it might survive. No, I didn't. Moving swiftly on, let's take a look at our science status, because we have some new science. So. Yeah, we already have early construction and early avionics in research, so I guess I'll just go and add this final part, the mature supersonic flight. Flying uh, with old people faster than the speed of sound. I'm sure that's something that I should be doing. I mean, I am one of the, the older YouTubers. I mean, there's not many YouTubers my age playing games, right? I, I mean, I try to tell people that I'm also trying to teach oh, science. Man. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at our contracts. Well, we have a sounding rocket contract, 271, you know. I couldn't manage it with that rocket, but I think we can build a two-stage rocket. And here we go with the Soundwave Mark III. A three-stage rocket starts out with a solid rocket booster. Then we have this ethanol liquid oxygen engine, which will sustain us to speeds. And finally, of course, we have the Aerobe sustainer engine, which uses a hypergolic fuel, and that will push us hopefully past 300 kilometers and to the sweet rewards. Preparing to ignite my stage three engine, we have vapor and feed lines, no! And we have a decoupler that's the wrong way around. Fabulous. Well, okay, let's see if we can collect some science while we're up here. Hey, it's new me again. So obviously old me could have figured that out if I had flown a simulation. But the simulations are actually costing about 100 funds each and the rockets cost less than 300. So might as well just fly it. And there you see, I am actually getting some extra science there because I'm jumping in, di in different biomes. So not a complete loss, but obviously changes will have to be made. Good news is this is actually pretty stable heading into the ground. This knowledge will be useful for the Mark IV sound wave. 
Okay, sound wave mark four. We have made a subtle. Ch oh, oh, wait, we have an insufficient resources to ignite. XLR 11 engine failed. Okay, so it's new me here, and definitely during this session I had serious problems with ignition. I think the, there is a bug right now, but I can't confirm. I'll talk to the guys about it. Approaching stage three ignition, and we are go! We are go Wait, no. Oh well, that was not quite as good as I expected this thing to go. Um, hey, at least the instrument package is intact. Hey, uh, new me again. Yeah, uh, old me just didn't really think about aerodynamic stability. I mean, he did think about it, obviously, but clearly didn't consider uh, the full implications of what might happen. Anyway, uh, this thing did continue to fall back. Unfortunately, there really wasn't much in the way of new science to be had because we'd already flown over this ground before. So let's just skip to the explosion. And that explosion is the signal to the engineers to develop Mark V. Okay, so we have fins now on this uh, third stage. Hopefully that should keep us stable. And once again, we have an ignition failure restart, but we're able to go. The good thing about this XLR engine is it is designed to be ignited multiple times. So yeah, new me again. I did actually try to cluster multiple of these engines together to build a bigger first stage, but having this level of failure rate in the ignitions meant it was impossible to do anything. Okay, approaching stage three ignition, and we're clear, and we're go! Look at that plucky little rocket go, about to set altitude records if it keeps straight and true and focused on its task. I think we're gonna get 300? 318! Excellent! Excellent! So we can go, we've gone higher, or we're gonna go higher. On the way out of the atmosphere, I'm gonna try and collect some more science, just in case, you never know, we might pass into the correct biome. Hi, uh, new me again. So yeah. 300 kilometers was more than enough to satisfy that contract. Now, the way it works is I'm going to keep getting these contracts and I'm largely waiting on the development of bigger engines so I can fly a stage higher. As it happened, this thing actually ended up flying over continental US. Of course, that was great for me, uh, extra biomes. Terrible from the point of view of anybody that has a rocket falling onto their head, and I just saw that happened in China, at least according to one news story. There's photos showing a rocket engine, supposedly, that has fallen through somebody's roof. Look at the rate this thing is spinning, those fins are actually starting to stretch off. Not that it matters, it just ends up in a giant ball of wreckage on the ground here. No survivors. I'd really like to be putting parachutes on the front of this thing, but we are stuck with a bug right now where none of the parachutes are resizable by tweak scale. I'm not sure what it is. I uninstalled it, reinstalled it. This is the CCAN install, and we're just going to imagine it's an extra challenge. Okay, so do we have... Yeah, we have our sounding rocket high. So I could actually do this one. I, oh, no, no, that's 2,000, sorry. Yeah, 2,000 kilometers are not yet within this range, but I could definitely do this, so I could just keep doing this for money if I want. I mean, after all, I am just waiting for my, uh, for my science to, for my research to bring us the engines that are powerful enough. So I think another run at this, perhaps bigger and better. Okay, so this is the Soundwave Mark VI, and I've stationed somebody next to the button that controls the engine because we want to make sure that that engine fires. Okay, we're set and we're going. Oh, whew, a little bit of a glitch there. But clearly whoever was on button duty managed to flip the switches fast enough and now we're headed. So all I've done here is stretched each stage just a little and added more boosters on the bottom. So we should end up with even higher speeds, higher altitudes, higher velocities. And stage three activated and off it goes. Yes, this plucky little upper stage is hoping to set a new altitude record. Look at it spin, look at it go, it's still rotating, even though it's a long way, it's high, high, high. And we get up to 500 kilometers, almost 550. Oh, wow, that is a serious altitude record, but a long way from the 2000 that we see. Now, one thing that I haven't looked at is what qualifies for high versus low altitude science in Earth's orbit. I was about to say Kerbin, can you believe? I'm, I'm going to get this backwards. Uh, so, 
I don't know if 550 is going to be sufficient, let's find out. No, it was not enough. Okay, now we're going faster, what are the odds those fins will shear off? Ooh, that is not... that is really interesting. They're getting hot! Oh, and we're disintegrating! We're disint... what is left? What is left? It is really decelerating fast. It, oh yeah, this is the whole probe core, the sounding rocket core, and the thermometer and everything. They all survived. At least, a little longer than the rest of the rocket. Out of the frying pan and into the ground. Well, that was completely unsurprising. Okay, enough of those uh, missions involved that were unmanned. No, Vadim Grekov is going to take control here. So we have enhanced this. What we've done is we've doubled the number of solid rocket boosters at the start, and we have filled every nook and cranny of this thing with fuel. So, a little bit of a flare at the start. Now get the nose down. Hopefully we don't hit those things. Okay, that's us. Bring the nose forwards. So instead of doing that, we're going to go forwards. And we also have some extra control surfaces on the tail of the wings to provide enhanced roll control, I guess. And yeah, you see, unlike the other one where we ended up heading towards the ground, this one we are going straight up. So we're going to go into a climb. A two, uh, We're going to climb, hopefully hit about 200 to 300 meters per second, and then hoping to get 25 kilometers altitude, 600 meters per second speed record. Hello, it's a new me here again. So what, what I've done is right-clicked on these procedural tanks and slid the utilization factor all the way to 100%. So I'm using all of the space for fuel. This means that I've got more fuel in the existing airframe, which means it should be stable. Uh, now, of this uh, utilization factor is a feature of procedural tanks because uh, if you try to fit a typical fuel tank inside a cylinder, then you lose space because of the rounded end pieces that are used on pressure vessels. Anyway, back to old me. Things are looking good. 20 kilometers up and we are still, we still have plenty of fuel here. I'm going to start letting the nose drop just in a minute. We want to make sure we get through 25 kilometers. I'm just tapping, tapping pitch down. Don't want to do it too aggressively because we want to do like a gravity turn and get as much speed as possible. Enable the, the nose tanks finally, so that'll just give us a little more fuel. And 25 kilometers. Okay, so we just want to follow a ballistic trajectory now. We don't really need any more altitude. What we want is speed here. 400 meters per second. We're already through the sound barriers and going. 450 and we're pretty much up but we're above 25 kilometers so we've got a new altitude record 500 meters per second and we're still burning fuel let's just nose down help get gravity to help it's 570 80 590 600 meters per second and i see a flashing in the achievements in the top right this is a good flight vadim grekov is going fast he's going in the correct direction so the previous one, it was pointed out, he was actually pointing, going uh, west to... He was going west, which meant he was going against the rotation of the Earth, so in fact he was the slowest person on Earth. Whereas now he's actually going the correct direction. So I'm just going to turn this thing around and we'll use our excess... Or you, we'll basically use our energy to bring ourselves back to the launch site where we can land. You know, I'm just thinking I could have considered ripping off that undercarriage and tried to land without that, but I suspect that that, um, that pod at the front is rather unstable. So I'm just turning this. It seems really sluggish at these speeds, but I think that once we get below Mach 1, we'll be able to turn a little faster. So I'm just going to try and... You know, I'm just trying to keep keep the speed up, but I think we're okay here. Once I get down below like 10,000 meters, that's when things really start to get good control. You know, 10,000 meters is 30,000 feet. It's roughly what, or 33,000 feet. It's what the altitude that um, jetliners fly at. That altitude is like the sweet spot between, whoa, wait a second. Oh, 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 oh. I was about to say the sweet spot in terms of performance and drag. Oh, no, 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 wait a second. That is not good here. We have some weird oscillations going on here, and I... Uh oh No, 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 no! No, Vadim, get control of her again. You are stalling this, bird. Glamorous Glennis is not, 
is not gonna do this. Okay, at least we have the parachute. That's the good news, right? Okay, I think we might have control. No, we don't have control. Okay. Ah, uh, oh man, this is not good. This is not good. Okay, try and get some control here. We may end up, uh, we may end up ditching in the ocean there. I'm sorry, Vadim, but your victory parade might be a little wet. I know you're all excited about having broken, you know, almost, well, almost twice the speed of sound at the end there. I don't know exactly how fast it was, but you did pretty. We did pretty good. Okay, now I think we got control again. Oh no. Okay, I'm pushing the nose all the way down, and this thing is wanting to pitch up. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm just sitting like 20 degrees off the axis here. Maybe I can adjust the tail here. Uh, roll indicator. Uh, increase the control deflection, maybe? That might give me more power. Yeah, more... Oh, man. No, no, no. That's not good. How about those wing tips? I don't know. This is actually... If I could keep this orientation, we're okay. I mean, it seems that I'm kind of following, like, a essentially a fugoid oscillation, but with the nose pitched all the way down. Okay, clearly by fitting those extra fuel tanks we have managed to move the center of mass backwards just enough that this whole thing is unstable, which is not good. Not good, but actually it is... Oh man, I've, I'm just holding my finger on the pitch down control. Oh, and now I've gone all the way through the pitch down, yeah. Now we're gonna pitch up! And, oh my god, look at those g-forces here. I think at some point I'm gonna have to just give up. I'm running out of altitude to fix this thing and I am, I'm totally in a spin. I'm sorry, it is time. There is, there is no, no time left. We have to deploy that chute. There we go, okay. So at least, oh, it seems to actually have helped make things more stable, oddly enough, I guess. Oh, no. It almost looks like it's flying with that thing behind it, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, maybe not, actually. I, that would be an interesting notion, attached like a really tiny chute behind to move the center of pressure back. wonder if you could do that. Okay, so the only thing about this is I don't know how tough that cockpit is. That cockpit was the thing that kept on breaking when I was trying to build this during the live stream. So it might be prudent for Vadim to try jumping out at the, the appropriate moment. Uh, I couldn't rescale this parachute either. If I was able to do that, if the parachute scaling was working, I would have scaled this thing up to make it stronger. But that is not happening. It's not happening. And we're 1,600 meters. We've got about 10 seconds before the main chute opens. Actually, we're doing okay here. 60 meters per second. Vadim is ready. He is bracing himself for this deceleration because parachute deployment can be a hard thing. Yeah, it would be really cool if we could get one of those like three-point uh, par secured parachutes like they have in the uh, on those Cirrus aircraft. Yeah, those are cool things to actually watch. Anyway, we are coming down to the ocean at about 11 meters per second, and I suspect that this cockpit, it may break. So I'm gonna be do the, the prudent thing and EVA just as I'm about to touch the water. The idea being that uh, he is probably gonna be tougher than that cockpit. Worst thing you wanna do is be in a cockpit and not have the door open. If you're hitting water, you wanna open the door so that the, if the airframe gets beat up, you don't get trapped. Okay, ready, ready, and EVA. No! No! Can't exit! Module has no hatch. Oh, Vadim! Vadim! You may have had your moment of glory, but unfortunately it ended in your death. Such are the risks that we take in pursuit of space technology. And we'll continue pursuing that in future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.